Hello, the following video is about an analog mixing console by Studa, Swiss company. And we think it's world class. We used it on our last album uh, by synthwall.com. It's called Nihon. It's about Japan. And we used most of these analog gear you see in the back here. But we mangled it through this uh, wonderful mixing desk. And there were some responses on Facebook and everywhere. And people were asking, uh, which equipment did you use in the studio? So we are starting a little video series uh, and this first video is about the console and it was totally improvised. The, the sound, this is crazy because normally we are sound freaks, is really bad. It's just a GoPro sound. We've been sitting there talking about it and it's about three parts. It's an introduction. In the middle part you can see the functions of this mixing desk especially also for guys uh, out there who are starting mixing and want to know how does it work and what are the differences be between that and digital consoles. And in the end, we have some philosoph uh, philosophy about um, this analog digital thing and why do you use something like that? I know that there's many people out there discussing that and uh, we just want to add our uh, vision uh, of what we are doing here and maybe it's interesting and probably this console is very interesting uh, for you because we co also could have used an SSL 4000 uh, uh, in the other room where we used this one. And so here we go. Maybe it's interesting. And if you like, you can subscribe to this channel uh, and write some constructive stuff in there or response or, or questions. Um, and uh, I might answer or we get into a discussion about that. Uh, hope uh, you enjoy this video. It's quite long. Uh, I put some chapters in there. You can move to everywhere you want to so you don't have to listen all through. And that's it. And now we're going to start. Okay. Hi out there. This is Chris Mick and this is T Stock and we're in the studio on tape studio here and it's mostly an analog studio we're working in. And our latest production was www.synthwave.com. Synthwave. .com, synthwave. You might listen to that and there were many questions from people all over the world. How did they do it? Because the goal was to make most of these records analog. So I used analog synths and in the end we ended up here. Uh, so uh, we might take a little time to talk about the equipment in the studio. First we start with this console here. Uh, actually it's a 904A. Mm -hmm. uh, it's built in the mid 80s. Believe it or not it was designed for an OB van uh, from an Austrian broadcasting company. The, the, the reason why I have chosen this console as my favorite is uh, because I've uh, got to know the, the pure quality uh, Studa has manufactured and their passion for quality was incredible. In every single thing you have on this console you feel their passion for quality. Uh, if you take, for example, uh, th those switches, mm -hmm. that this, these switches do not have light bulbs. Yes, I see. So it's mechanical. Yes, it's mechanical, yeah. and so no light bulb can fail, and it doesn't consume energy. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, the audio signal is not routed through the switch. This switch switches a FET, a uh, field effect transistor, mm -hmm. and so no noise uh, can be generated by the switch. That was one thing I, for, that I thought first when, when we started mixing here. Absolutely noiseless, yes. yes. Uh, and you also told me that, that below these faders it's a little bit different done from the SSL. Even from the SSL it's, it's a gigantic, gigantic uh, console. Of I don't want to put the SSL in the mm. second place. This is a complete other way to design because they had to design this for broadcasting companies and there was a complete other design and um, the first thing they did is they ramp if you switch this console on mm -hmm. they ramp up the power supply oh, and yeah. the power voltages very slow so it's not instant like putting the switch in if you're switching something electronical on mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a very short time you stress all the electronic components ah, I see and if you ramp the power vo supply voltage slowly to its uh, rated uh, value, this de-stresses all the components mm -hmm. and this leads to a very long life of all the components. Mm -hmm. If you run a console like this, you have to do 
a complete refurbishment. You, you do not have fun with the console if you do not uh, change the caps. You can discuss whether you have to change the caps or you have do not have here. There was no discussion. Mm -hmm. The caps were bad or were out of value so that we uh, so I had to change all the, the capacitors I had to do some refurbishment on the electronics but uh, but keep that in mind that there are many people who are looking on reverb.com or on eBay if they get something you get the smaller version of uh, this console so you also have this uh, transportable yes. uh, it's, uh, the prices are going through the roof but once you've bought one Uh, you really have to uh, take in mind uh, what you just said, that it, it, it should be recapped or should be maintained, or can you do it, or do you know somebody who can do it? It's, yes. it's not worth it all just to buy to have it, yes? This is with every vintage yeah. gear, I think. You have to, uh, if you want to have fun with it, and you want to have the most uh, reliable thing you have, uh, you can get from it, and the best sound, you have to go through it, and you have to refurbish it. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing is, you, you talked about the 961, the 962, which are the portable uh, mixers. The, the last ones, uh, the Studer mm -hmm. brought on the market, they were still manufactured, and I think, until the 2000s. I was interested in, in buying one, but now it's going five, six, seven thousand yes, euros, it's, it's, and it's going it's, up, 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 like EMS synthesizers and all this stuff. Unbelievable. And the market is empty, yes, in a way, yes. yes. Also, this console's... I've seen some in Korea there, but do you do yeah. that? if you can Where get your hands on one of these consoles, uh, don't wait. Yeah, <laughs> buy it. But when was it built? You said in the 80s. It was. 80s. It was set into service, I think, in 1987. That uh, was uh, Willy Studer still was around uh, that yes. days, and he yes. personally uh, yes. was involved. In, in and this was a big step ahead to the consoles they had before, mm -hmm. because there was a big step ahead in the op amps. Uh, the operational amplifiers were now available and with a very high quality, and so you could uh, design such mm -hmm. a console. And uh, very special on this console is it has, it has uh, VCA faders. Mm -hmm. They are voltage controlled, as they do on an SSL. Uh, on SSL, they use DBX mm -hmm. modules, mm -hmm. 202, I think, is, is the name of the, the modules. And here is a Studer-designed VCA. Mm -hmm. You do not have an, any audio signal on this fader. Mm -hmm. It's all a, a controlled voltage to change the volume. And you have a compressor in each channel, which we are, which we were able to, to, to do because of the VCA. So this is modules, and you can can you take them out? Not not now, but like at the SSL, you just take it out, or, yes. or you even can mix from the G tab to the E tab what you did with this SSL. Uh, yes, but but here it was uh, there were no different generations. There were different options. This is an A. Yes, because this has a full equalizer, yes. four bands. There must be very few of this exactly this type. Yes, I I think. This console is unique. You do not, uh, uh, <laughs> That's um, why I didn't find it on the web. This is uh, this is something uh, which is not unusual. Mm -hmm. Studer. Studer manufactured the consoles on demand of the yes. uh, customers, and so you won't find consoles which are exactly the same. At the 961, 962 modules, they are not very special. There is nothing, uh, not often many changes. You just said customize. That seems seemed to be a philosophy of Studer uh, to customize things, and they were able to do that because they had total control of all the parts. Yes, uh, they were not built in China or anywhere. Uh, they did uh, okay. There might be parts uh, they uh, taken from third parties, but but most of the things and these innovations and the, were made by Studer than Studer themselves. Yes. Even more in the, with the tape machines, I think. they they sometimes they even mm -hmm. built their own screws. <laughs> they they got so deep into it's this so great. Swiss, it's, it's Swiss, yeah. and and uh, yes. if you are looking at the tape recorders, where electronics and mechanics are working together, right. I, I don't know any other device where mm -hmm. in the audio uh, industry where it is such a, a union between electronics and mechanics, yeah. and their pure passion about the stability, about the precision, mm -hmm. it's. 
It's incredible. It's this watchmaker accuracy. Yes. Let's say, take yes. it like that. Yes. You, can you get that even more on the mechanical devices yes. like the Ace can, series exactly. we have. Here. We will later on in other videos, by the way, if you're interested, uh, we might talk on other equipment here like uh, the Studas. Uh, uh, tape machines, we have uh, 24 or 16 track and all these things, but most important is uh, you might subscribe to this channel, ring the bell, and you might write something down there if you have questions, and this would be motivating for us uh, to get to other equipment. But now let's focus on this uh, console again. Yes. Um, if if we take one channel, uh, what would you say? Let's start from from this one here. We go mm. through it, and you just explain what's going on here. We have sixteen buses where we can directly uh, get the signal out of the console. Mm -hmm. Especially we have eight aux ways. Six of them are mono, and two are stereo. So in in fact, you have ten. Mm -hmm. We have a switch between a line, tape, and mic input, like mm -hmm. on any other console. We also have a generator. It's built in the console. We can we can uh, easily switch and look here is the generator active and sweep the frequencies. We have white noise, pink noise, and now the generator is off. Mm -hmm. It's about I think 70 dB microphone gain. The, the mic amp? Yes. Uh, the mic amps are very special also in the, in the small consoles. Yeah, on the, in the small consoles they are even more special than here on this console. Mm -hmm. There was a, a, a trick by uh, Paul Zwicky who was uh, one of the engineers at Studer. He invented a special circuitry. This is not uh, uh, built in this console. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless these mic amps are very very neutral and uh, I love them. They are my reference. Mm -hmm. uh, we have phantom power, we have phase uh, inverse. We have a, a high and a low cut filter. Mm -hmm. If you switch one of them in, you easily can see it because the light uh, bulb, uh, the, the LED goes on. Mm -hmm. And here we have a four band uh, equalizer and uh, you can, can, can switch the, the bandwidth of the, of the filter by pulling the switch or putting ah, yes. it down. If you do not want to have anything of the, the equalizer in your channel, you can simply switch it off. You can compare your work you are doing with the equalizer and you can switch it off. Here are the four other aux uh, uh, ways. Mm -hmm. Here we have the balancing switch and you can pull it off to get it right in the middle. And you also put some parts of the circuitry out of the channel mm -hmm. strip. So. The less electronics you have in your circuitry, mm -hmm. the better. Then we have here a, a mute switch and an insert switch. Um, this is something special at this console also. Um, this has balanced inserts, which uh, is not uh, often uh, done at these consoles. And here we have the, the main fader. It does not have a monitor fader like the SSL has. It has only the main fader because it's not an inline console. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you have some tricky switching you can do. You can define each of the faders as a master fader. And you can build a group. Let's say it's a group 10. Yes. You can take the other one. Let's say this is, they are now grouped. He's mm -hmm. the master. And if you're putting it down, the, both, ten, both channels are switching off. Mm -hmm. And you can do it with any fader you have and this is incredible because <laughs> quite a lot, yes. um, you can uh, do some very interesting things during mixing mm -hmm. if you are using this switch mm -hmm. here you have a solo button and pre fader listening okay but this was automation there was also uh, an automation system oh uh, really yes by, yes um, yes because we were mixing manually that was an experience yes. for me it's yes. old school stuff yes yes you have to remember with what 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 do you do at this point and uh, and you can't recall many hands, you, you, yes. uh, not like an ssl yes, where you can recall record. every switch yeah. where uh, this is something you have to live with this console yes. does not have any record. You have to yes. take pictures or... It's, we might uh, talk uh, at the end of a couple of minutes about this philosophy. So in the, in the middle... Or, um, in the middle, this is a very special section yeah. uh, which was manufactured for the customer by Studer and uh, this is specially designed. To be honest, I had to, to do some tricks to get it uh, to work. Also have to know that I have built 
the complete studio around this console. Yes, yes. Because yes. I there were there are some specialities. You started with a console and then yes. you built it up. Yes, and then yeah. you build it up. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the monitor section. You can choose between different types. You can listen to the aux ways. You can yes. listen to the sums. You can also have uh, your output gear. By the way, you, you use this Neumann yes. and you got the NS10 over there. Yes, but and you got this big stuff. But yes. normally we were mixing on, yes. on this. No, I'm on that. We are, we not are. too expensive, but very well. I, I, I really incredible. like them, yes. Yes, they yes. are very incredible. Yes. And uh, here up uh, is something you can see some of the, the sums. Mm -hmm. They are uh, put up here and the aux ways, which also have an equalizer on board. Ah, you can mute the, the aux way, you can put in the equalizer. For example, if you do not want to have too much travel in mm -hmm. your reverb way, you can simply switch it down here. And this is great, uh, especially uh, if you use yeah. EMT, you've got also here. Down here this is the monitor section, okay. also very special. The main thing are the specialties you have in, in some of the the features the, the channel strips mm -hmm. offer you. Should we carry on to the last section over here? And uh, Yeah. On, on this section, it's uh, by the way, it's a 42 channel console. Yes. It has 36 mono channels and six stereo channels. The stereo channels also have some options here for stereo miking, which is incredible. Um, and uh, you can do a stereo spread if you want, which makes the, the picture of your stereo image a little bit brighter. And uh, you also have your equalizer, but you do not have low pass filter. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the routing. You, all these aux channels and all these possibilities to switch something in. Uh, so the patch bay is over here. Yes, it's one part of the patch bay yeah. uh, I have here at the studio. Yeah. This part was, was already built in the console and I've added one uh, of these uh, patch bays. Yes which goes directly to my outboard gear and normally I use these effects in the insert way. Yeah. So it's modular and you put that in because I've never seen a console like this uh, with this sort of uh, patch yes, bay. You have to be, yeah. yes, uh, uh, at the, um, the SSL uh, there's also something else like this mm -hmm. uh, on the left hand. And there is a patch bay um, which was already built in by SSL and here it is, this part was built in by, by Studer and I've added only this one to get my support gear. Um, so that was um, miraculous to me when you've been, uh, we've been doing this mastering process and everything, and you, we, we've been choosing compressors. How does it work? Uh, so, so there are cables coming in, uh, but they're coming from where? And, and uh, there's all this outboard yes. equipment, you have, outboard equipment uh, here. If you have a look at the outboard equipment, yes. there's always a little sticker which says here it's insert. Uh, Ah, I see. Five to six. Yes. And this way goes directly here on five, six. And you can switch in the Chandler if you want All right. to each channel. And you ac activate it on, uh, in the console, you activate it uh, through this here then? Yes, it's it's first on activated the if you are putting a switch in. Mm -hmm. you can, uh, we can do it on channel 24, for example. I switch it in mm -hmm. now. You can push the insert button, and if I take out the switch, mm -hmm. the insert way is blocked. So, what about the noise coming in through this surrounding? Uh, you have all this stuff uh, in here. Some people say uh, it's heating up if, if, if everything is, would be switched on. Uh, don't you have noise problems by so much outboard gear routing it into this analog? Uh, first of all, you do not use every yeah, outboard gear sure. at yeah, yeah. once at a time. You, uh, only, uh, have, you only choose one at a time. Logically, if you are running everything, the uh, heat is generated, but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Uh, are some in there where we'd say, you would say, well, everybody knows... Uh, <laughs> This year, and yeah. uh, lots of this stuff. Some, some are more noisy, others not. Or especially, you also got this uh, um, tape de delay here, co chorus echo, and these things, analog stuff. To be honest, noise is not a problem to me. It, noise is a problem if you have a, a compressor which is uh, activated and you have the fader up and there's no signal sure. coming in. Yeah. Then you generate noise because okay. the compressor uh, keeps up the noise. But first of all, this console is as quiet as possible. Does it make a difference? really to take such a, a console. Does it have a certain mojo? Does it have a certain character? Yeah. The first thing is that the workflow. 
Yes. You can concentrate on the music. Mm -hmm. You are not looking at a screen, you are not searching yes. for any uh, menus you would like to have on your screen. You have it in direct access and I, uh, I think you are very fast. You, you, can, you have everything as a hardware knob right in front of you and you can listen if it's better. Or, or, or not better, um, and this is uh, something which is a very big part of the analog way. Everything is in front of you and you can concentrate on the music. And you're reflecting much more. I'm coming from this digital, digital stuff. I did this mm. 30 years at university yes. and growing yes. up with this. And, and uh, then I'm, now I'm coming back to this and, and the first thing I thought is I'm really disciplined by something like uh, like that. Yeah. I really have to have a plan in my head. Uh, yes. It's it's not it's more uh, um, uh, inductive than being deductive uh, uh, from the philosophy. Deductive is more uh, I take innuendo or logic or pro tools, mm. push something in, and then I have all these opportunities. Here, uh, it, it starts with a band playing. Come to that later, not in this video if you're using tape machines, because this is part of a chain mm -hmm. of uh, production philosophy. Does it would it make sense to use such a console if, if you're only uh, working with Neon? No, I don't think so. No, no. I don't think so. you can t t take a controller and that's it. Like Andrew Sheps is working in the box now, mm -hmm. and but Bob Clay Martin has an SSL, so I, it's still there, you know. Yeah. But, but I, I don't think that computer can ever compete with such a console uh, because of the, Thank the, you. because of because of the handling I uh, I don't want to degrade the computer because it's it's an incredible tool and you can do so much brilliant things like cuttings you never could do on a tape machine and um, we are now happy mm -hmm. to have both of them we have the computer at hand and we still have these consoles mm -hmm. around if you are working with both i think that's uh, uh, the best way hybrid working yes hybrid working i was just think so it's uh, not about the digital versus analog no, so no, no. take the best of both worlds but uh, to be clear, there are certain aspects in, in certain part, kind of music where it might be better to use something like that, even today. Yeah. Uh, but it's so rare, nobody does it anymore, so everything is mangled through this digital uh, um, thing. But uh, the other thing is, it's not total recall. Uh, now you have the faders like this, and everything is put up, and you have to focus on one title. Yeah. And this title... Uh, once it goes through the, uh, the Nagra uh, you have over there as a mastering machine, or the Studer over here, uh, then it's gone. You go to the next one and everything is uh, reset in a yes. way, and you can't yes. record it. Instead, you, maybe you write something down. But this is a creative process. It's like uh, playing Bach on a grand piano, and every time you start a new, and it's a new interpretation, and that has a certain charm. And that doesn't fit into our times, but maybe even more people in the future might find this very interesting because it's an individual process. Yes, and yours. This, this is an individual process, and uh, something if you are performing in front of an audience, it is their performance. You are doing a performance for your audience, and if you focus, take this example as a, as you are doing a, a mix, uh, it's also you are doing a performance. Mm -hmm. And I like it that it is not recallable. I, I like it because you have to make decisions. Decisions are lasting. Yes. And this is, uh, 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 you can always change a mix. You can every day another mix, but you don't know which is your, my, my best mix. And my philosophy is to do it in, in a certain time, mm -hmm. maybe four hours, mm -hmm. not more, and wait some days and do a critical listening and some changes, mm -hmm. and then it's done. It's also like learning an instrument uh, from scratch when you're starting with something like this. One day you get virtuosity uh, on this because you... Your skills are growing with, you have always start from new and you have exactly, you have to know what am I doing here mm -hmm. and what worked for me in the past and what will, might work in the future, yes. what works with certain yes. music. 
like red hot chili peppers who are doing this yes. analog stuff, Jack yes. White does, yes. many people do, uh, we might talk about that also in other videos, if you're interested, write it down there, yeah. uh, we get into this. So, in the end we could talk for hours and yes. hours, but maybe you all got a little impression uh, about what's it all about here. We don't want to do this discussion analog versus uh, digital, but you know uh, something about this Studer philosophy also. There are many other things here, and we might get to that later on. And let's look ahead. And don't forget, there's an album out uh, I wrote on this uh, website, uh, Synth Wall. Synth Wall. It's an analog synth album. Yes. Uh, dot com. Uh, what this album is about and it was mixed uh, mostly a lot of this was mixed here we're looking forward to do more projects maybe yes. uh, even next project uh, bring uh, I was at the synth studio bring the analog synth here like Moog and Harp and Oberheim and don't use uh, sequencers and uh, digital at all go directly into this console and play directly to 24 or 16 track and do something like that old school uh, you may ask what also, what that all about. Yeah, you also need uh, musicians, you musicians yeah. that are able to. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, Chris yeah. is one of the the yeah. people who is able to to nail it down uh, at the first time, and mm. this is incredible. And this is in, uh, I love to work <laughs> with people like this. <laughs> and and to make a last point, deepest respect. If you do something like this, uh, also with the uh, tape machines. Deepest respect for those guys in the 70s yeah. and the, the pre MIDI and whatever era, even the, into the 60s, like this brilliant Beatles book, Recording the Beatles. We both got it, we found out. Uh, so then you find these guys were really able to play. Uh, the Beatles' first album was made, went, made in one day, yes. Uh, and uh, these guys at Abbey Road really knew what, what uh, they were doing and it would be nice if, if this doesn't go into the universe and, and still uh, uh, is, it's our heritage and people really? like you are still doing this and this is so great, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Looking Thank you. forward. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.